few months ago, Dr. Brad Stanfield posted a video in which he explained why he stopped taking fisetine and quercetine, two of the most popular supplements in our longevity community. This comes in a total contradiction to the expert opinion of other longevity researchers, such as Dr. David Sinclair, Dr. Paul Robbins, and Dr. James Kirkland, who is right and who is wrong. I too watched the video, and after researching about it and found pretty shocking things, I had to post my reply. And today we will do an investigation into Brad Stanfield's conclusion and into the ITP study that he mentioned. Today we are going to discover what are senescent cells and why they matter to your longevity, what is the number one reason Brad Stanfield stopped taking fisetine and quercetine, and today I'm also going to tell you what I really think about Dr. Brad Stanfield and his channel. If that sounds too boring to you, it's going to get much worse. Let's start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Rimon. This year, Dr. Brass Stanfield published a video called Quercetin and Fisetin, Why I've Stopped Taking Them. Why should you care about that? As a member of our longevity community, you know that aging is a serious issue. And you know that you can slow down this process with every food, exercise, supplement, and habit that you do. Each habit that you do matters, and all these habits work with one another. And the decision whether to take fisetine and quercetine is a serious one, because these supplements are among the only tools that we have today to combat against dangerous cells that accelerate aging. These cells called senescent cells. If they don't work, we should know. Because if what Brad Stanfield says is true, it looks like we have lost the only tools that we have against these cells. And we have no hope to deal with those cells naturally. But... If fisetine and quercetine are effective against senescent cells, and for longevity in general, and we are not taking them, it's missing opportunity based on poor judgment. Then you may ask, why has Brad Stanfield stopped taking these supplements? Brad puts his reasoning for stopping to take fisetine and quercetine supplements on the ineffectiveness of these supplements against senescent cells. To understand that, let's answer for a second this important question. What are senescent cells? And why do they matter for your longevity? Senescent cells are zombie-like cells, the ones that accumulate over time in your body, probably because their epigenome gets screwed up. But what they do is they shut down, they stop dividing, and they start secreting inflammatory factors and also factors that cause cancer. Yeah, and so getting rid of those would be a presumably a good thing. And well, that's it, what Fisid and Kersinin appear to do. They do uh, in the dish and in mice. Uh, and there are even some human studies now that show that killing off these senescent cells in the body can improve health and ultimately we think could extend lifespan. To be more scientifically accurate, a senescent cell, it's a state, a state of healthy normal cell reaches as a result of reaching the end of the life cycle. Cells can become senescent due to age and also due to exposure to some chronic stress such as damage, radiation, mechanical pressure or even infection as a protection mechanism from cancer, locking the cell growth forever in case it will become cancerous later. The problem is not senescent cells per se as much as their out-of-control accumulation when they reach a certain threshold. If they don't accumulate, the immune system can manage them, but lets them cross that threshold and they infect the immune system itself and the rest of the body with aging. They are aging infecting cells and become extremely dangerous, almost like cancer cells. Fisetine and quercetin are natural compounds produced by plants as a response to stress. And they are critical for our longevity community. Here is why. Fisetine and quercetin are the two most researched natural tools with potential to eliminate senescent cells. The rest of the tools that we are researching right now in our longevity community are drugs, especially drugs against cancer. And both these cancer drugs and fisetine and quercetine work by defeating and eliminating the defenses of senescent cells. And the hope is this. Fisetine and quercetine could possibly eliminate the senescent cell defenses and allow them to die quickly and peacefully. One bites the dust. Therefore, if what Dr. Brad Stanfield says is right, it begs the question. Is our only hope to kill these senescent cells is waiting for big pharma to develop expensive drugs to eliminate them? Of course, we won't have access to these drugs because, hey, no doctor will ever prescribe a cancer drug for a healthy person. 
So we are pretty much dependent on fisetine and quercetine. And if Brad Stanfield is right, have we lost the only natural tools in our hands to combat these senescent cells? This is really important decision. So before we remove a potent tool from our arsenal, we must be sure about it. There is no room for confusion. We need to be certain. And it seemed that Dr. Brad Stanfield was sure about this decision because he fully trusts the ITP, the organization that conducted the study that showed no benefit against senescent cells from fisetine. Let's hear what Brad had to say about that. The latest results from the interventions testing program have been pre-released, and unfortunately they show that fisetin has no effect on lifespan or health span. Many people, myself included, hold the interventions testing program as the highest level of preclinical evidence, and for me, the excitement and hope around fisetin and quercetin, it was generated from this preclinical work, but now we've got new data from the interventions testing program that for me supersedes that original hype. So I have made the decision to to stop taking fisetin and quercetin at this time. If you're part of a longevity community, you've probably heard the term ITP multiple times, usually coupled with the term the gold standard. Now let's see how the ITP works and why their work matters. This way we can understand where Brad Stanfield is coming from and why their findings about fisetin are so important. What is the ITP and should we trust the results? The ITP is a collaboration between three research labs that run lab experiments on longevity in mice in three different locations. The ITP has four major strengths that give them the gold standard acclaim in longevity research. Testing longevity directly. The organization doesn't sell drugs or supplements lacking commercial bias replication of the experiment on three different locations, and using healthy and somewhat diverse mice. And all those four reasons are why the ITP plays an important data source for our longevity community. This is why many experts in our community give them the accolade, the gold standard. And this is why many of the longevity research videos on this channel are based on their research. I am grateful and we are grateful for the ITP work. Now that we understand why the ITP are so important, now we can understand the importance of what the head of the ITP said in a video segment that we are just about to see right now. This is one of the heads of the ITP, Dr. Richard Miller, who had the following to say about fisetine. And we were given a drug called fisetin, which allegedly is a senolytic, allegedly right. removes senescent cells. Uh, we tried that at two different dose regimes, it also had no benefit. Huh. But then, at the, the mice we gave it to, they also didn't have any deletion of senescent cells. We were neither able to reproduce the reported health benefit nor the reported change in senescent cells. So here, Dr. Miller exposed new data from the ITP research showing that fisetin supplementation did not provide any lifespine benefits, nor was it effective in removing these senescent cells. If you've been taking fisetin and quercetin, you're probably confused, because many experts in our longevity community present different opinions and different data. In fact, many of these experts take fisetin and quercetin themselves. Let's hear a few of them. This is Dr. David Sinclair speaking about that. Um, so I've added um, quercetin, uh, which is a molecule related to resveratrol, which is also uh, suppresses the activity of senescent cells. The, the one that I'm testing out is Fizetin, F-I-S-E-T-I-N, Fizetin. We showed in 2003 and 2005 in two nature papers that it extends the lifespan of animals, uh, small animals, worms and flies, but nevertheless, it's been now shown that it's senolytic. It kills off the senescent cells in the body, at least in mice, probably in humans, based on some human data. And this is Dr. Paul Robbins, who researches senescent cells. Could you share what you do personally in for kind of preserving your longevity well i think exercise i've been eating healthily um i'm of the belief that a couple of glasses of red wine are good for you and not bad for you um i take the senolytic facetin because we have shown it's safe in mice and there's a number of clinical trials and it seems to have a benefit so i take uh, facetin um it's facetin exercise and trying to eat in a healthy way Dr. James Kirkland is one of the world's experts in senescent cells and of the use of fisetin and quercetin to combat them. This is Dr. James Kirkland explain an experiment he's running with fisetin. 
the Fazetin trials, and it's to test the, the efficacy of Synalytics. And there's a trial which is just beginning. It's going to be in uh, when it's fully rolled out in 129 nursing homes across the United States. It's funded by the NIH. And this will be for uh, patients who test positive or have tested positive for coronavirus who are nursing home residents. We so in this ongoing study that Dr. Kirkland has mentioned, they are trying fisetin to kill senescent cells. This is because these cells, when accumulated, worsen our reaction to COVID-19. As you have seen, he oversees studies using fisetin and quercetin to kill senescent cells. And he has a contrary data. Listen, Dr. Kirkland would not have done these studies unless he thought fisetin works. And there is data, there is published data that supports his research. For example, this paper from 2018 found fisetin is a senotherapeutic that extends health and lifespan. Of the 10 flaminoids tested, fisetin was the most potent senolytic. Acute or intermittent treatment of fisetin reduced senescence marker, meaning senescent cells. Administration of fisetin to wild-type mice later in life restored tissue homeostasis, reduce age-related pathology, and extended median and maximum lifespan. As you can see, we have a contradiction here. And this is exactly why the ITP study is so confusing. And you may even be a bit frustrated, you know? It looks like every expert pulls into a different direction on which supplements to take or not to take. And they never debate one another. And you and I, in the middle of this controversy, try to decide what to do with our body, with our health, and with our longevity. And indeed, this question of fisetin and quercetin is important. Who is right? Whom should we follow? And are we wasting money and time by taking fisetin and quercetin? Do any of these researchers have financial interest in fisetin and quercetin? We have to figure this out. And this is why you and I need to think on our own. And for that, we need to interpret data correctly. As Brad Stanfield says, quality data is important. And I agree. And the ITP data is indeed high quality. Not only it's high quality, but it's also scarce, which makes it valuable for our longevity community. But I'm adding another thing. Quality data matters, but it only gives us better material to think about and make more confident conclusions. But we still need to think. A common mistake in research in our longevity community is putting data before interpretation. The interpretation of data is the most important thing. Interpretation means how we make sense of the information that we have. If you make a mistake in the interpretation, you reach conclusions such as playing basketball makes you taller. Hey, the NBA listed highest of players is a very high quality data and is accurate. Yet the conclusion is still wrong. It doesn't matter that we had high quality data. Therefore, our goal is to interpret the ITP data correctly to see if they are right and Dr. Sinclair, Robbins and Kirkland are wrong. And with all due respect, we can't just take the word of Dr. Richard Miller, especially when so many experts are in contradiction with one another. We need to see the data. Then we can think about it ourselves and connect it to everything else we know about fisetin. Now, as we approach the study, what are we looking for? What are the critical questions that we need to answer? One, what dose of fisetin did they use? This is important as we're gonna go deep in this investigation. Two, at what age it was giving to mice? You know, mice generally, for example, uh, most mouse strains don't have much in the way of detectable senescent cells before 16 months of age. Why would you give senolytics at four months of age? They seem to be most effective uh, in the case of mice uh, that are naturally aged, that are non-disease models, when you give them at 24, 27 months, that kind of age, when there's an accumulation of senescent cells. Removing senescent cells only benefits health and life expectancy over the age of 55 or 60 equivalent, which is about 24, 27 months in mice. If they started the intervention sooner, they may not notice benefits only until the mice age. Three, what other parameters of health did they measure or examine? For example, did they measure their health span? What about the health of their bones, their heart, their liver, their brains? I want to know that as well, not just maximum lifespan. And four, how did they measure the senescent cell burden? Dr. Richard Miller said that they saw no benefits with senescent cell burden. How did they measure that? You see, there is no one accepted way to measure this. Let's hear Dr. Kirkland explains how difficult it is to measure and target senescent cells. So some senescent cells have an increase in P16, 
Others have an increase in P21. Some don't have increases in either and may just have an increase in P27. Some senescent cells, not all, only 30 to 70% can develop a senescence-associated secretory phenotype. Other senescent cells do not. I want also to know if they operated specific organs and examine the senescent cells burden on those organs. I wonder what they did. They operated the organs. So you see, we have to read the entire study. So let's go and do that exactly. So now we are going to the ITP website. Here you can see the list of the studies. And you can find that indeed in 2018, Fisetin was researched. This this has to be what Dr. Richard Miller referred to in the video segment that I showed you before. Now let's delve into the study. Now I'm going to the publication list of the ITP website. All the published studies appear here. I'm searching now for Fisetin. I see zero results in the search. That's interesting. Am I missing something? Dr. Miller came out speaking about this study. Stanfield published a video about it. It has to be published already. Am I going blind or what? So what do we do here? We have to contact the ITP directly. So I sent a message to the ITP organization requesting this exact study. Hi, this is Ramon from the Wellness Messiah channel. I would like to read your full study about Fisetin from 2018. How can I access it? I didn't receive a response. Then I decided to contact a friend who is from the medical field. He may get a response. And indeed, he did. My friend received a response from the person who oversees the papers published by the ITP organization. I'm going to quote the response to you and I'm going to hide their names because I was not part of this conversation. Thank you for your interest in the ITP Fisetin in hydrogen sulfide studies. The data from these studies have not published yet, but we will begin working on the papers soon, as we are just in the beginning stages of the writing process. This is disappointing and quite surprising. The study wasn't published yet, and how can we make conclusions about our health based on a study that's yet to be published? If we cannot do data interpretation, we cannot make conclusions. But don't worry, there is more to the story, because we can still do some data interpretation with the data that we do have. Yes, we can interpret some data, and we are about to discover a huge mistake the ITP has made. This is in the next episode. Let's conclude for now on this Fisetin controversy that the study wasn't published yet, which means that we cannot make a full data interpretation or reach proper conclusions. But hold on, didn't Brad Stanfield say that he also stopped taking quercetin? Dr. Brad Stanfield said that he also stopped taking quercetin. Since Brad trusts the ITP, I would expect the decision to come directly from the ITP research. Has the ITP tested quercetin? I couldn't find anything on the website, but I did find Dr. Richard Miller speaks about quercetin. Have you tested any of the other senolytic drugs like quercetin? No. No. Okay. So you tested only fisetin. So the ITP didn't test quercetin at all. So why has Dr. Brett Stanfield stopped taking quercetin? I found a segment from him where he explained this decision. So if there's no benefit with fisetin, and even worse than that, there's no senolytic activity seen, as in there was no evidence of clearance of the senescent cells, why would I use a less potent senolytic in quercetin if fisetin doesn't work? So I hope that makes sense. So my understanding from what he said, and it may be incorrect, is that fisetin doesn't work, therefore quercetin doesn't work either. My take is this. Even though fisetin and quercetin are from the same polyphenol family, they are still different molecules and deserve each one its own research. It could be, for example, that they both target senescent cells, but in different contexts. For example, Dr. Kirkland found that quercetin, combined with a cancer drug called disatin, did show promising results against senescent cells. And we don't know that about fisetin. The study is from 2021. It's kind of a new study. It's called Senolytic Combination of the Satin Alleviates Intestinal Senescence and Inflammation and Modulates the Gut Microbiome in Aged Mice. As you can see, the study conducted also by both of these doctors we heard from today, Dr. Paul Robbins and James Kirkland. They have found in the study, I'm quoting, Hit and run treatment with senolytics, which in the case of the statin plus quercetin, significantly decreases senescent cells burden in humans. 
As you can see, quercetin seems to work in this context, in humans, when combined with a cancer drug called dysatin. This may or may not be true for fisetin, so it's very difficult to extrapolate and copy and paste conclusions from one molecule to another. Therefore, in my opinion, to exclude one molecule based on a research on another molecule is too far of extrapolation. Let alone the extrapolation is based on a study that wasn't published yet. So trying to extrapolate one supplement to another based on unpublished study, I wouldn't go so far. But that's my opinion, and I may be mistaken. What's your advice here? What do you think? Please tell me in the comments. What do I think about Brad Stanfield? Honestly, I like Brad Stanfield's channel because I feel that he was with our side with this anime controversy. Very few people truly understand longevity and aging, and you are one of them as well as Brad Stanfield. This is why I feel he's part of our community. And to be honest here, we hardly have any medical doctors researching longevity or even being aware of the existence of this field. We need doctors who recognize that aging is a problem, doctors who are using the aging process as a target to treat sick and old people. And Brad does exactly that. He works at a place that takes care of elderly people. And that means to me that he's a caring and empathetic person. And frankly, many of my videos I owe him. He stimulated me right now to respond with this video to a video that he published, and he forced me to dig deeper. And also, on a personal level, I know how hard it is to get an MD certification, which Brad has. My baby sister is a medical doctor too, and I remember how much effort and time she needed to pass those exams, and the sacrifices that she had to go through to get this certification from the academy. Of course, we need to remember that there is no training on aging, longevity, or as I call it, youthfulness preservation. And my sister told me she received zero training on aging when she received her MD. Listen, it's a new stuff, and it's not taught in the academy. And you know, many of the best studies that I've read only came out in 2020, 2021, 2022, so it's impossible to integrate this new information quickly into the medical system and into the medical schools. Yet aging and longevity affect every one of us. We age every single day. Therefore, you and I need to think for ourselves, to track our own bodies, to read studies, to learn from experts, which is good because I know that you are smart. Our entire community is extremely smart and active, and that includes Brass Tenfield and other content creators in this field. That includes experts who have experience with lab animals, like Dr. Richard Miller from the ITP and Dr. David Sinclair from Harvard, even though I know that many in our community now are upset at him because of what happened with the NMN. And most importantly, you and I need to connect the dots of everything we know and interpret it into a practical habits that any healthy person can follow. Healthy and intelligent just like you. And in this channel, I'm sharing my interpretation, thinking, and habits for healthy people, not sick or ill people, from 15 years of longevity research. I've been doing this since 2007. In the next episode in this series about fisetin and quercetin controversy, as usual, if you know me from the resveratrol investigation, we will delve deeper into the ITP study about fisetin and see what we can glean from that. You'll discover a terrible mistake I found from the little data that we do have from this study, and hopefully the study will be published soon and we can make a complete data interpretation. We also going to learn that despite the gold standard accolade, you will learn the ITP biggest weakness that nobody speaks about. This will help you a lot to interpret studies to habits that you can follow today, without confusion. And if you wonder, in later episodes, I will share with you if I take fisetin quercetin and exactly how much and when. And you know what I remember now? I have a special announcement for a fresh longevity course. Subscribers can go to the community post here on YouTube and see the announcement here now. So you can use the community tab and see the announcement there. So until the next time, stay healthy, stay young, Think for yourself, and until the next episode, remember, the correct data interpretation is everything.